the Community Health Assessment. And with me this evening, I am pleased to say that I have a whole panel of experts, and I'm going to let them introduce themselves since I've already done myself. So we will start at this end. And I'm Therese Mott. I represent Prairie Star Health Center. It's a new facility if you haven't seen it on 30th and 61. We're moved in and ready for patients. I'm Judy Weinland. I'm the administrator of Reputation Western Powers. We're on 700 Monterey and we're an old facility, but um, we're glad to be here. And I'm Darla Wilson, the executive director of Hospice and Home Care of Reno County. Good evening, I'm Laura Corey. I work at Horizons Mental Health Center. Good evening, I'm Lisa Gleason. I'm the Director of Community Impact for the United Way of Reno County. Hi, I'm Karen Norris-Smith and I represent the Hutchinson Clinic. Hi, I'm Molly Brown and I'm with the Reno County Health Department. And I'm Carrie Major, I'm with the Hutchinson Community Foundation. Tonight I'm representing Heal Reno County. Well, thank you so much for being here tonight. We are really excited to be able to share with the community uh, the work that's gone on over the last couple of years. And I guess we're very proud of uh, the work that's happened and anxious to engage you in conversation about where we're going from here as a community when it relates to health matters. So let me just give you a little bit of history. We started about, um, about three years ago in 2012, and it really started um, with uh, the Reno County Health Department and Hutchison Regional Healthcare System. Both of these entities are required to complete uh, a survey every three to five years. They chose to do the work together to have one assessment uh, of all of Reno County, and so they formed uh, a, commu a community committee to assess the health of Reno County, and that was formed in 2012. So here are just a few of the names of the people who started that work. They brought in a diverse group of representatives from both the various healthcare fields as well as community members uh, to help complete the assessment. The team was able to create a 44-page community data book that shares the community's health strengths, and it also shares in it the opportunities that this community has to work on health issues. Also, about that same time, uh, there was a group called HEAL Reno County that was also doing work in the community, and they were focused on healthy eating and active living. Um, the, this group was formed uh, through the, a grant from the Kansas Health Foundation to work on these initiatives for our community. The group, as I said, is called HEAL and is convened by uh, the Community Foundation. This collaborative work is very, um, they work very hard to support efforts in our community to create healthy and an active community. So, it just made sense that we had these two groups that were really focused on health within Reno County and trying to make it a better place to be health-wise. So it just really made sense that these two groups formed um, kind of a partnership to really work on communities' health and wellness. Uh, they collaborated their efforts and they sat down to truly make an impact um, in Reno County. They um, aligned their work, uh, they created some shared goals, uh, and they sat down to really see what we could do together. <clears throat> so from that, in 2013, uh, the Reno County Community Health Improvement Plan was um, formed. Um, what this, these combined groups did, uh, they assessed all the data that was gathered in that 44-page book regarding health in Reno County. Uh, we invited the public to come be a part of those discussions. I hope that some of you that are out there may be remembering were a part of those. Uh, as we sat down to analyze the information that we had gathered and really um, tried to look at that community data, 
we made some tough decisions to decide what could be our priorities as a community. How could we come together as a community and really focus on a couple of strategies that could really make an impact here in Reno County. So after um, uh, we had uh, several meetings, we narrowed it down to two priorities. And those two priorities were voted on and the decision was made to focus the community efforts on healthy behaviors as priority number one and priority number two, access to care. So this became our CHIP. Uh, which is the Community Health Improvement Plan. And so the work started there with these two priorities. So from here, um, we wanna share with you that work. Um, we, I guess we wanna brag a little bit, but also um, help you see that there really truly has been some great progress made on these health issues over the last couple of years. So I'm gonna invite Carrie uh, up to the podium and she's gonna share with you uh, she's going to start sharing with you some of that work. Okay, so the first part, healthy behaviors, um, Heal really took this on. So again, Heal is healthy eating, active living. Um, and so the way that we're approaching this work is through policy, systems, and environment changes. Um, and what that means is we're not just focusing on individual behaviors. We're not just saying, um, you need to be healthy, you need to be active. We want to put in place um, policies that modify the environment so that the healthy choice is the easy choice. Um, so it's um, modifying the environment to make healthy choices practical and available to all community members. Um, it changes policies and physical landscape. So we're talking about sidewalks, we're talking about um, what kind of food that you would get at these meals tonight, um, those kinds of policies. Um, and that approach um, creates a sustainable, comprehensive measure to improve community health. And so we've been encouraging Reno County businesses and organizations um, and government to establish policy change that promotes healthy behaviors. So I'm going to talk about a few of those policies that we've worked on so far. Um, the first one um, is a community gardens policy, um, and the City of Hutchinson Planning Department and the Community Improvement Commission developed a community gardens policy that was adopted by City Council in July 2014 in order to beautify the environment, teach children and other members of the community about gardening, foster healthy eating, and provide an alternative source of produce for residents. Um, they provide incentives, um, this pr policy does, including a one-time water tap fee waiver and the monthly sewer and stormwater fee waiver. Um, so they're using, um, they're making available land bank properties, that's something new in our community. Um, there is a new land bank and the city is buying properties and so if you have a spot that is open in your neighborhood that might work for a community garden, check with the city and see if it's in a land bank or if they own it, because it just might be the perfect spot for a community garden. Okay. Another thing um, was the complete streets policy. So the complete streets policy was actually passed before the CHIP um, was done before, but it was passed in 2012. Um, it only asks that the, that the city considers all forms of transportation when working on streets and does not require it. So the complete streets policy itself has no teeth. Um, so what we've been working on is things that are gonna get it into written law in our community that make the city essentially um, consider all forms of transportation. So right now we're advocating for the inclusion of sidewalks, preferably on both sides of the street, and the subdivision regulations revisions currently underway in the planning commission. So if we can get that, or some provision for sidewalks in the subdivision regulations revisions, um, that would direct the way that all new subdivisions in Hutchinson are built. Um, so it wouldn't affect the current ones, but whichever new, new subdivisions go on, uh, are built in town, it would say what needs to be there. We're also advocating to include the Complete Streets policy in the new comprehensive plan that will be developed this year at the city. The Bike and Pedestrian Master Plan, um, we are right in the middle of this process. 
Um, beginning in October 2013, the city began developing a bike and pedestrian master plan that will guide future facilities like sidewalks, bike lanes, bike boulevards, and trails. After a year of gathering input from the public through surveys and open houses, the plan was passed by City Council in October 2014. <coughs> through a Kansas Health Foundation Healthy Communities Initiative grant, a subset of HEAL and the Vitality Team of Reno County is now working on community education, community mobilization, advocacy of organizational decision makers, and education of policy makers to implement the plan so that it does not sit on a shelf. So um, you'll probably see these cards back there, um, but we have launched a new website called bikewalkhutch.com where you can go and you can see the plan um, and you can learn how you can get involved. If you care about um, sidewalks and bicycle facilities in our community, this is a great, great resource. Um, and an unexpected byproduct of Hutchinson's Bike and Pedestrian Master Plan has been the creation of a Bicycle Trail Advisory Committee by the Reno County Commissioners. The committee of 18 volunteers is currently working on establishing bike routes that connect with Hutchinson's plan and points of interest in the county. And they have to have that done by the fall. And the last piece that I'll talk about is Worksite Wellness. Um, the Worksite Wellness Initiative was started by the Community Development Division of the Hutch Chamber in 2012. More than a dozen worksites received Work Well Kansas training, and nearly 40 worksites have participated in work, Worksite Wellness luncheons. A number of worksites have instituted policy change as a result of this training, including Hutchinson Regional Medical Center. Um, and now that work is being done at Hutchinson Recre Recreation Commission in the um, Neighborhood Development Division. The Worksite Wellness Initiative, um, the Hutch Chamber started the Work Well Reno Award, and that's been given out quarterly since April 2012 to businesses such as Luminous Neon, First National Bank, and Cargill for ongoing efforts in Worksite Wellness. And some of the things that Worksite Wellness includes are vending machine policies, smoke-free campuses, free entry to local events promoting physical activity like 5Ks or bike rides. Um, They've built walking trails, they've installed bike racks, and they've encouraged the use of gym, mem gym memberships. So generally, these businesses realize that healthier employees, lower health care costs, are more productive, take less sick time, and have better attitudes because they um, have changed the environment and policies that affected individual behavior. Um, and Reno County uh, was a recipient of the Work Well Reno Award, so I will turn things over to Molly to explain how Reno County Health Department and the rest of the county has been working on the plan. As Carrie mentioned, um, Reno County was a recipient of the Work Well Reno Award in 2014. And part of the reason for that award was that we had decreased our insurance claims, particularly in chronic disease, and that's the overall goal for worksite wellness plans. And we did that through on-site healthy challenges, so all the um, county employees have opportunity to participate in various challenges that focus on nutrition and physical activity. In addition to um, the challenges, we also offer resources for mental health and tobacco cessation that helps with overall wellness. In line with the worksite wellness work that's being done, the new Prairie Star facility has a fitness room that is currently available to employees, and they are working on a plan to also have it available to patients in the community. So another um, aspect of healthy behaviors and trying to improve overall health is active living strategies, which are uh, put in place to help support healthy living. And some of the work that we've done includes the walking school bus. The walking school bus is part of the Safe Routes to School program. A walking school bus allows children to safely walk from home to school under the supervision of a volunteer or a parent who has gone through the Safe Routes to School training that we offer. It was implemented at Graber Elementary School in 2014. And we had uh, quite a few children, about 35 children per school bus that would participate. And we did start it at Nickerson this year in 2015, and we're hoping to implement it at, at other elementary schools throughout the county. Uh, in line with the walking, the Safe Routes to School program, Graber Elementary received a um, Kansas Department of Transportation grant 
that's going to help improve some of the infrastructure and the sidewalks that surround Graber, allowing children to safely and, and others to safely walk to school. As Carrie mentioned, we do, you might see some of the new um, bike racks throughout Hutchinson and South Hutchinson. This is intended to promote bike, bicycling um, as a mode of transportation, not necessarily as a leisurely activity. Um, in addition, South Hutchinson does provide bike safety clinics in June, and we recognize May as bike, uh, bike to work or school day so that we can promote this type of activity throughout the city. Another component of um, improving behaviors to improve overall health is community education. We provide education and resources throughout the community in various topics, and we all, we're always available to develop new um, topics as well that we can implement in, in businesses and do lunch and learns. Part of this is that part of the education process includes the formation of a poli of food policy council. Food policy councils are typically put in place to help um, gather data and gather information from the community about what the needs are. For example, in South Hutchinson, they currently don't have a grocery store. We consider that an access to healthy foods issue. And so one of the things that the Food Policy Council is working on is educating the community on the need for a grocery store. But before we get to that point, we've been working on um, possibly getting a community garden starting in, started in South Hutch along with a farmer's market. In line with that, the Food Policy Council also looks at actual access. Are sidewalks available for people to uh, walk to um, a food source? Is it easy to get to? Are there bus stops? So along with access to healthy foods includes transportation. And finally, in line with education, we do a lot of tobacco prevention because tobacco is related to chronic diseases. And so we promote smoking cessation. We implement policy at Hutch Community College. They did have smoking areas, for example, but they weren't covered, they weren't easily accessible, they weren't very clear to people that would visit the college. So we were able to um, strengthen that through a partnership with the community college and um, um, get a more clear smoking area in place. In line with that, we implemented the uh, Can Quit Cessation Program at the college so that students, faculty, staff, and visitors have access to um, resources that they may need in order to quit smoking. Um, you see the bottom picture, Kick Butts Day. That's a national day of recognition of um, kicking smoking. And so the college students put together a um, on-campus program with a lot of information and a lot of activities for the students and faculty to access when they came to school. So now we're going to move into our second priority. If you remember, we had two. The first one was healthy behaviors and promoting changing behavior. The second one is access to care. And when we refer to access to care, it could mean access to any sort form of health care, mental health, um, going to the doctor, needing emergent resources. So one of the things we found out is that we wanted to look at transportation. You all know we have a large, geographically large county, and so we want to look at access and how people are able to get to and from um, care facilities in the city, in Hutchinson. So we wanted to um, increase provider and community knowledge of healthcare transportation services available in the county. And one of the things that came from that was our RCAT voucher program. The health department par partnered with RCAT under the, um, kind of in partnership as well with the county commission, because we wanted to find out what was needed for um, community members to be able to get from the further places, or even in the city, to see their doctor. In addition, we wanted to make sure that um, community members also had access to follow-up care, maybe following a surgery, or maybe their monthly visit to monitor a chronic disease, so we came up with the RCAT voucher program. This increases access to care throughout the county. There's also different levels of qualifications. It's not, a, it's not a lengthy process. It's actually easy to qualify per se, but it, it can be level of need. It can be level of access, net level of medical need, and then also level of need as far as um, socioeconomic or um, if you can't afford to ride the bus to get to your appointment. 
and you can access these vouchers typically through your provider. So if you go to see your doctor and you ask them, hey, I, I, I have issues getting back home today and coming to my follow-up appointment, they can help you get a voucher that will help you come to the clinic. We also have the vouchers at the health department. So now I'm going to pass it off to Karen. Hi. Um, what we were working on was the access to care and working with the Hutchinson Clinic, that was one of the things that we were looking at is to make sure that you could get in in same day appointments. So what we have done is we increased our hours. Um, we have a walk-in care at the main building and then it's open from eight to six and then again at South Hutchinson. We open that new facility and have a um, mid-level staffed out there. So we have that Monday through Friday on 11, uh, the Main Street Clinic um, that we have. Um, it is opened from eight o'clock until, eight o'clock in the morning until uh, five o'clock in the afternoon. And then on Saturdays, we also increased our um, opening from eight o'clock in the morning until four o'clock in the afternoon so that people do not have to necessarily go to the emergency room. Uh, Prairie Star, who just opened their brand new building at 30th and 61, also has um, open access, and theirs are open from Monday through um, Tuesday from 8 to 6, and then Thursday, or eight, Monday through Wednesday, 8 to 6, and Thursday, 8 to 5, and then on Friday, 8 to 3. And the Reno County Health Department also has a walk in uh, care era hours. And they are open from 7 o'clock in the morning until 6 at night. So they can come early as well to the health department. And then on Fridays, they have a little bit shorter hours of 8 to 5 um, for access. But that was some of the things that all these facilities were working on um, to increase access to health care. So from the uh, Hutchinson Regional Medical Center, we are, we are open 24-7. And this year, we expanded the access to the hospital by putting in a road there. And it's now open to the public. And uh, it's a beautiful road, no bumps, no potholes. Uh, so, um, so it makes it easier to get back and forth there. And uh, one of the other things we did was we expanded our emergency department this year beautiful waiting room and a fast track area for minor, uh, minor emergencies and then the regular acute care room, all new spaces over there. Um, among other things that we've done, we did put a social worker in the emergency department to help those patients who have been discharged. Sometimes when you're discharged, you, you need certain things when you leave. So now there's someone there uh, 12 hours a day, seven days a week, who can help you get to some of those things that the doctor tells you you need to have afterwards when you leave. Um, we've developed some other programs as part of the access to care issue. Uh, care transitions when you are discharged from the hospital, transitioning back home or somewhere else, you have a nurse, you have other clinical assistants to transition you back from the inpatient setting. We transition patients with all varieties. There's a special program for pulmonary patients uh, that helps you in those special needs to get your, whatever it is, supplies, et cetera, somebody to call and help you once you leave our inpatient setting. And this year, for the first time, we have developed a palliative care program. And palliative care is for those people with a, maybe a chronic condition, a pain condition. They're not patients that are, that are in hospice, but patients who have a long-term issue. And our palliative care program kicked off in the beginning of May. And um, there's some brochures back there about that if you're interested. Um, and we've been very pleased. It, it, it keeps people um, in their homes. It keeps people comfortable. And it's been very well received so far. Um, we also have a patient navigator at H Hutchinson Regional Healthcare. And that individual helps you with the insurance part. It's become very complicated to figure out who goes where and what they need and how the, the new insurance bill affects people. So we have a patient that sits in the front lobby at Hutchinson Regional Medical Center and can answer questions about those kinds of things. Um, this particular gathering was a result 
of the feedback that we received from the last community health survey that people wanted to come and hear about medical things. They wanted to hear from doctors. They wanted to hear about different diseases, conditions, etc. So first course is actually a result of the feedback we received from the community that you wanted some place to go to hear those things. Um, we also did one uh, seminar or two, I believe, for teenagers based on the same concept that they wanted some place to go to hear about medical conditions and have people speak on different topics. Um, we do a Becoming a Mom series for moms who are getting ready to have babies and teaches you about um, bathing and uh, all, the, all the different steps that lead right up to giving birth and then afterwards, because that's a huge transition for many people. Um, we have lots of support groups. We do free health fairs. We just finished one of those in the last month or two. And we have another one in October that will be right here in this building. Um, Horizons Mental Health, which is one of our affiliates, they have something called open access. So now if you have a mental health need, you don't need an appointment to go. You can just go there and they will take care of you. They also have an, an open access system for medications. If you need a prescription and you need to talk to someone about that, you can call them. And there's some brochures back there on how to access that service. So we're trying to make it easier. Healthcare is very complicated. So we're trying to put those people out there so that you can reach them when you need them. So. So the last thing we'll talk about um, when it comes to our strategies under the priority of access to care is just making sure that there's a 24-7 resource for people to go to. And one of the uh, areas that we worked really hard on was just strengthening the 211 system. 211, um, if you aren't aware, is um, uh, thanks to your donations to United Way. It's a free resource to our community. Um, one call to 211 can connect individuals to um, any opportunity to be able to find out what resources are available in our community and specifically what we worked on very hard was to make sure that all the health related areas uh, were listed on 211 so that if anyone calls at 11 o'clock at night wanting to find out some information about health in Reno County the resources would be listed there um, in order um, to make sure that they could have access to that. So we worked very hard to make sure that all of that happened. I will tell you that as you look at this panel up here and you look at the, our community partners on the screen, these are all the partners that are working together uh, to work on improving our community's health. So um, let's give a big shout out as we go through these to the city of Hutchison, the health department for Reno County, Hutchison Clinic, Prairie Star Health Center, South Hutchison, the city of uh, Hutchison, the uh, um, Chamber of Commerce, Hutchison Regional Medical Center, Hutchison Community Foundation, Hospice and Home Care of Reno County, United Way of Reno County, Horizons Mental Health Center, the Hutchison Recreation Commission and Wesley Towers. Would you give them all a hand? <laughs> this is a big feat to ask all of these entities to come together and collectively work on some common goals. And as you heard up here, they've done a great job of aligning uh, their goals, uh, po pooling resources together to truly try to make a deeper uh, impact on some of our community issues. Uh, what we'd like to do at this point is to take a few moments and see if you have any questions for anyone on the panel uh, regarding community health, um, uh, in, uh, inquiries, or perhaps even comments uh, that you would like to share with the panel. So I'm gonna, we have a Vanna somewhere with a microphone. Have a car that has the 
plenty uh, hours and phone numbers so we can have them where we can get to them immediately at home. Yes, it was, and she had quite a time, especially in winter when it's icy, and that's what contributed to it. But has anything been thought of? Well, we do have access to now to the RCAD system, the bus voucher system, and we do have an internal fund now to for transportation. So that that I can answer. was if we would have a, a card or something that would have a, a phone number with the clinic's number on it <coughs> with all of them and that is something maybe something like a magnet that you could put on the refrigerator okay well that's something that we can certainly work on and, and look to that's a good idea so. are the computers at both the clinic and the hospital ever got to talk to each other <laughs> working on that. That is something that the physicians um, absolutely love to have is that all that information in one home. And so with, with the KHIN, which is the Kansas Health Information uh, Network, that is something that we can pull all that information in and it's something that we are working on so that we can communicate. The doctors do have access to both sites. They're just not married right now. So. <laughs> Actually, 211 is a state. Um, it's throughout all of Kansas. Um, there are very, very few areas that aren't covered by 211. McPherson is covered. And so uh, to continue to strengthen uh, the 211 network, just make sure that um, those in McPherson that have health uh, organizations are all listed on there. We can't just list them. We have to ask permission, um, but we would love to strengthen that and make sure that all health organizations in McPherson would be listed on there also. Great. Yes, we do. Uh, uh, the RCAT comes, and I'm my windows, I can see it as it goes by, and I think they come about under 30 minutes. So uh, the bus route, or the uh, RCAT route, is uh, very effective as far as getting people to and from appointments. Oh. And we also have vouchers for people, you know, that they talked about. So that was a, a big project to make that accessible. And 
And that was one of the things this group looked at as far as access to care, making sure that the routes, um, we worked with our cat, they were terrific to work with, by the way. Uh, they came, I don't know how many times to talk to our group, probably about three times. Um, as we worked through making sure that every access point into a healthcare facility was covered on a fairly um, regular basis throughout the day. are subsidized by some federal monies that we um, apply for, but we take people that are uninsured, underinsured, and then we also take people that have insurance. And we have physicians, it's just like a clinic. Um, we do lab, we have x-ray. Um, I don't know if you saw in the paper about a month ago, we have contracted and we have a uh, the coach that comes with a mammogram and DEXA scans. So um, we're providing uh, those services too. And um, uh, if you haven't been out there, you might want to come and, and tour. You can call one of the administrative people and we would love to show you around. sliding scale fee for those people that do not have insurance, but that's not the only group that we see. Oh, okay. So that well, is... Um, you can see anybody if they have their insurance and all of that. Right, right. We we'll see money. anybody. So, and we also have like a, you know, farm workers program for people that, um, um, you know, maybe uh, are here on an itinerant basis. And so uh, we do uh, see just a variety of people. Yes. Uh, we have a full-time dentist and a dentist of uh, uh, dental staff. And so um, I think they have, what is it, nine stations that they can, 11? Okay, 11 stations. So it's a a wonderful large clinic. Anything else? So um, at this time we are going to ask you haven't done so already, you actually have a survey uh, on your chair. Um, help us to understand the community needs. If you would take a moment to fill out that survey and just drop it in the box that's back there, it would really help us as we start this process again. We are going to be starting the next community health assessment. Within the next few weeks, we'll be starting to ask the public to take the survey. Um, the survey itself is five questions, it's three sections, it talks about the overall community, talks about community health, and then the last part of the survey just asks for some demographic information. We want you to know that um, the survey itself will be uh, confidential, the only thing that will be shared to the public will be aggregate, so the total uh, uh, information is what will be shared to the public, um, but we hope that you'll take a moment to, to take that survey tonight to kick it off for us and get it started. Um, the other thing that I'm going to share with you uh, is that there should be a, a blue card um, on your chair as well. It's kind of hard to write on. We've recognized we have blue ink and blue paper. That was really good of us, wasn't it? Um, we were just trying to coordinate blue, I guess. Um, but um, it's certainly asking you for your name and some information. We're going to use that for a drawing this evening, um, the, after this evening. We're going to be drawing for four $10 hutch bucks. And we're also going to be drawing for a $25 Dillon's gift certificate. So we're very grateful to Dillon's and the Chamber of Commerce for donating those 
to you guys who came out tonight to hear about community health. So if you make sure that you fill those out and drop them also in the box back there. And then there's also on the sheet, if you're also interested in becoming, um, just like to learn more, like to be a part of maybe our next discussions, as we talk about community and our priorities as we move forward, you saw tonight that the community selected two priorities um, over the last health assessment. That was access to care and healthy uh, behaviors. Certainly, if you'd like to have a voice and be a part of those next discussions by checking that you would be interested in any of those uh, areas, uh, we would just contact you and let you know when the next convenings will be. So we appreciate uh, your time tonight in taking the survey. But one of the other things we also want to ask you is please tell your friends, please tell your family members as we uh, uh, go on the adventure of taking this survey and gathering some new da data over the next couple of months. It will be really vital uh, as a community. The more people that participate in the survey, um, the better information we'll have to really start tackling some of these deep ingrained issues within our community. The survey will be available online or we'll also have um, some hard copies at each of the community partners if someone doesn't want to fill it out online and wants to just do a hard copy. So we appreciate your help in taking the survey tonight, coming out and listening to um, where we're at on community health and initiatives to improve community health. Um, I think Amelia, we're going to have, uh, let Amelia wrap it up. Um, but if you have any questions afterwards, please don't hesitate to talk to the panel themselves. So thank you. And I just wanted to say that the results from the last survey are up on our website. Are they up on the, they're also on the, health, health, on the health department website? A lot of work went into those. If you if you want to just see what it looks like when it's completed, it's a, it's very lengthy, but it does go into a lot of detail. So, um, and we get that just from these surveys that we get back from you. So it's nice to know that if you're going to put the effort into a survey, something is going to be done with it. So we do appreciate uh, the time and effort that you gave us this evening for showing up and, and doing the surveys, and uh, thank you so much for coming. Mm -hmm.